got to do is go back this winter and sort themselves out because they've just made a complete hash up of the power characteristics of the bike. Gardner's up in the second there as he's nipped past Rainey. Wayne Gardner with a big move on Rainey now. Now this is the race we've wanted to see. We've had Eddie Lawson out with injury. We know that Wayne Gardner is carrying an injury to his right hand wrist from a crash in practice. Can he uh, catch Lawson out and can we see the battle between these two? They've dominated the championship. Lawson, of course, out in front, both in the race here and the championship points. Gardner would dearly love to beat him. Screwing the Honda up now. Wayne Rainey was led in the early laps, has been bumped back to third place. Christian Sarrell, the Frenchman, he's back in fourth. Yeah, McKenzie's making a bit of a charge now, and uh, he had a very good race here last year. Uh, he rode a 250 here a couple of years ago and he really enjoyed the circuit. So maybe uh, McKenzie's going to get his finger out and get a British guy on the uh, podium for once in a way. Been a while. Sure has. Your record here, amazing. Yeah, I won six, uh, six out of six uh, Swedish Grand Prix. In actual fact, the last British guy to win a Grand Prix was me here at Sweden, 81. So it's about time. Well, there's been another mass change of places back there because Wayne Rainey and Saron have forced their way through now. So the leading bunch, uh, well, they're having a dogfight, but Lawson out in front in the clear air, and he's just running away from it at the moment. Yeah, the worst thing in the world you can do is tangle with anybody here. When I say tangle, uh, sort of have a race with anybody, nip up the inside of one and then the outside of another and back again, because all it does is lose your time. You can see Lawson's got, what, virtually three-second lead now, two-and-a-half-second lead. And um, once you get that at Anderstop, if you can just, just get sort of four seconds, it's a fabulous cushion, and you've got a clear road in front of you. Is rhythm important here? I guess it is in every racetrack, but, but this circuit looks to flow to me. Well, it, it does. You know, it's such a difficult little circuit, and uh, you have to be on the ball every single corner. Um, with, with this group of, of four guys here, for example, Wayne's trying to get up the inside of, of uh, Wayne Rainey, and... Um, you're so fully occupied with trying to stuff it up the inside of the other guy that um, all the time Lawson's having it nice and easy. Well, it's a great battle between uh, Australia's Wayne Gardner, Wayne Rainey, Saron. They're really fighting it out while Lawson now starting to build a bit of a cushion here. Now, you mentioned when you are over at Donington, not only uh, have you had the chance to ride the Suzuki, but you would have seen the latest development in tyres too. How important are tyres here on this circuit tonight? Well, the thing is, with Anderstop, it's very hard on tyres, but all the tyre manufacturers know how hard it is. So, especially Michelin have done a lot of testing here, so I don't think uh, we're going to have any tyre trouble. Maybe Dunlop's, um, they haven't done as much uh, testing there, they haven't had as much experience there as the Michelin. See, Schwantz is way down there. He uh, fell down at uh, the British Grand Prix at the Chicane. In actual fact, he centre-punched uh, 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 Ron Haslam and he cut his other knee, so he's got a pair of knees that are not very really in good condition, and you don't need that round there. He needs to be really fit. Eddie lost in his front. Wayne Gardner was in second place. He'd managed to get in front of that group. The last time we saw the group on camera, we'll anxiously wait to see if he's still there, but Eddie Lawson really starting to build a cushion on the Yamaha now, the championship leader, and this would just about wrap it up for him tonight, and he knows that he's only got to keep in the major points and he'll take the championship. It's Wake Fowers, they come round to this corner, and it is definitely Wayne Gardner from Australia is in second place. Wayne Rainey is in third. Mackenzie, and then Saron. Gardner having a bit of trouble getting away from the bunch now. He's got a little bit of a buffer now on Rainey. We'll see if he can get out and maybe put some distance, uh, or shorten the distance between him and Eddie Lawson. Yeah, Lawson's got a, quite a big lump of... Uh ground on Gardner at the moment it's it's nice to have a nice free run um, what it does for you is make life really easy when you come to the back markers because you don't have to sort of take a deep breath mind you Gardner looks like he's pulling in a little it's early times yet uh, give it another sort of four or five laps and we'll see if uh, Wayne can get away from Rainey and the other lot this is lap seven of this race tonight lap seven you see Ron Haslam there on number four that's the uh, Super duper um, L revolutionary bike doesn't bear any resemblance to a standard motorbike, and they've yet to get it to go as quick. 
and he's been chased there by uh, Rob McKelney. And it's a very, very sad thing because McKelney's had a factory bite for the last three years and never even finished in the first three. That and bike you're talking about is the one that Malcolm Campbell rode? Yeah, it is, you know, and Campbell did a good job to ride it and uh, Haslam was nearly two seconds a lap quicker than he was, and it? Just so sad that uh, somebody like Suzuki's don't give uh, Haslam a decent bike. Just breaks my heart that McKelney's had a factory bike for three years. I can think of any one of four young Australian guys that could push it around about two seconds a lap quicker than he does. Well, Wayne Gardner now getting a little buffer on that other group of uh, Rainey and McKenzie and Saron, who is uh, McKenzie has forced his one to third place. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. stuff on the Honda as he's trying to catch up this lead that Eddie Lawson has uh, built up. He was caught back with a pack that you're looking at now. And that was a, a dogfight back there. It was elbows and knees and a little push and shove too. But Gardner has now made the break and he's chasing Lawson. It's a big ass kid tonight. His wrists are sore. He's come off again in practice. And this man is just sitting out in front. He's got clear air. He's got clear vision. He's healing from all of the wounds that he suffered. He's been a courageous rider this year, Eddie Lawson, but this race at the moment is his. The only man that can challenge him, Australia's Wayne Gardner. Barry, can he do it? Well, he's, Gardner's definitely pulled out a bit on um, Rainey and company, but um, by the same token, uh, Lawson's pulled out a bit on Wayne, so we're just going to have to wait and see. It's it's difficult to get a good... Oh, that was a... You see, this. that's exactly where Wayne fell off. It's a dodgy old corner, very, very hard in first gear. So all, all we need is, uh, or rather all Wayne needs, is for Eddie to have a couple of sideways ones like that. And it definitely knocks your confidence because you're riding absolutely on the limit at Anderstock, you know, putting the power down as soon as you can. Um, so we'll just have to give it another few laps and see, uh, see if Wayne can pull him in a little. Lawson sitting up on the, bikes as he, uh, on the bike as he comes down under brakes. Letting the airflow hit him, slow him down. You'll see him now throwing himself over. Beautiful balance on the, on the machine with this rider, isn't he? I mean, he's, he just looks so good. He looks like he's just part of the bike. Yeah, he's pulled it out to 5.89 seconds now. Um, but Gardner is definitely, definitely pulling away from the, the pack behind him. So uh, it's not a lost cause as yet. One thing is, though, that, uh, that Wayne can actually see him, so, I mean, he knows if he's gaining, he knows if he's losing ground. Well, that's the big thing, you see. It's so much easier to uh, follow someone than it, is, than it is to sit in uh, first place and try and pull away, because you're thinking, OK, you know, I'm going as hard as I did the lap before, and then you get a pit ball, and it says you lost half a second. Um, so Wayne's in the best position as far as... Uh, having a good go is concerned because he can see the guy in front and you know, try hard and see if you make up any ground it uh, makes a lot of difference do you think lawson rode a tactical race uh, at donnington where he was he was content to sit back again i mean he knows that he uh, had a good lead in the championship perhaps he was willing to let wayne win it if he could because of the injuries no i don't think so i um i spoke to um eddie after oh, saron running right up on the curb there uh, I spoke to Eddie after, and he had said the thing was sliding around quite a lot, and it uh, looked most uncharacteristic of uh, Lawson's bike, because we're used to seeing uh, Wayne's bike leap from one side of the circuit to the other, and um, Lawson's thing was jumping around quite a lot. Um, they just didn't have this thing set up right and didn't have the right tyre compound, so I think all he did was just sort of settle down and say, well, OK, you know, I'm not going to be in the first sort of two or three, I'll just take it easy. Starting to come up on the back markers now as we've seen Wade Gardner come onto the straight as well. So I think Gardner is starting to pick him up a little. It's only a fraction of a second each lap, but he is starting to come up with the back markers. As you've said, he's got that buffer going in to mix it with the back markers. That'll make it easier for him. But only one little balk, and Wayne Gardner will be there. Well, that's the thing. You come up on a back marker, and uh, the one thing is, if you're in the lead, you've got, a, you've got sort of a five-second lead the way Eddie has you've got a bit of time to sort of pick and choose where you're going to pass them. But the other problem is the fact that uh, the back markers don't realise they've been lapped as yet. So you're the first guy passed, and uh, they think it's somebody behind that they're racing with, and they usually shut the door on you. So it's uh, six of one and half a dozen of the other, really. Well, apart from that one little hiccup that he had, Lawson seems to be doing it pretty easy. Look at him coming round there now. Most of the other riders have been really coming out and hitting the curb. 
as Gardner's gone a lot wider as he comes round the back marker looking for a way round, but Lawson seems to uh, be taking it pretty easy at the moment. Yeah, I think he'll just sort of settle down into his own pace and uh, see if he can keep uh, the gap between himself and Wayne the same. And you, you do it for sort of three or four laps, try the same, and then if uh, Gardner starts to catch him, then he'll put the pressure on a little. We mentioned before, in 1984, Eddie Lawson was first. He was second in 85. He won it in 86, and he was second in 87. So it's a circuit that he really likes and enjoys riding on. Wayne Gardner was third in 84. He ran out of fuel while leading in 85, second in 86. He won there in 87. Yeah, Gardner is definitely, without any shadow of a doubt, pulling um, time in on uh, Lawson now. So we can only hope that uh, he keeps at it. And uh, maybe Eddie will come up against the first punch of the back markers, and that will slow him up a little. So it's Christian Saron in third, and Mackenzie is in fourth in the yellow-coloured leathers. This is Eddie Lawson. Great shot of the bike there as he heels it over. That is an incredible long right-hand corner, this one. It seems to go on forever. And you've got the fairing of the bike dragging on the ground the whole way round. It's quite funny. When you come out of it, you can hear the thing like, Shh, sh, sh, where the fiberglass is dragging. Might be funny to you. At that speed, I think it would be frightening. <laughs> uh, it, it's, uh, it's a nice little circuit. As I say, it's such a shame they don't spend a few bob on it. You see there now, you can, it's a noticeable difference that uh, Wayne's pulled in some from Gardner. If, uh, if they'll uh, give us a shot at what the distance is now, I wouldn't mind betting it's under five seconds. Oh, Ooh. look at Wayne as he throws the bike up with a big mono there as he gets the power down. But when we saw him come around that corner before, he's still going wide and using all the track, where Eddie Lawson came around a lot easier and took a, a much cleaner line, a much leaner line, if we can put it that way. Yeah, I think you'll find... Uh, uh, Lawson uh, on the third lap had a bit of a sideways there. So what it does, uh, Lawson's got the fastest lap there, 134.43. Wow, that is really going. That's not... Uh, well, it's two seconds off the... Almost two seconds off the lap record. Yeah, Lawson had a bit of a sideways there, so he's, um, he's uh, treating that corner a bit conservatively. Average speed on that lap was over 150 kilometres an hour, so they're really motoring here in Sweden tonight. This is lap 12. The thing is about this circuit, as far as the rider is concerned, it's, it's such a hard work circuit that um, you do 30 laps or 35 or 40 laps. I did a 60 lap race around here one time. It just seems like nothing. 6.36, I can't, I can't believe that's right because I'm sure that uh, Gardner's pulled some time in on Lawson. Hard to tell though, Barry, we're only getting a shot of yeah. Lawson. You can't really get a shot of them together. Maybe we'll get that in a second. As we watch, again, as Lawson right, comes around here, here's Gardner there now. So it's much the same gap. Christian Sarah and McKenzie having a, a good fight for third and fourth. Wayne Rainey is in fifth. Kevin McGee six and Didier Duradiga is seven. Bradigas with a great start, but has dropped back to seventh place. McGee in sixth place, the other Australian on the other Yamaha. Now, this is Lawson up behind some back markers. Oh, he's got through. So you get stuck behind a back marker between two corners here. You, are, you have had it. There's no way you can get around it. And uh, it loses you so much time. Well, that gap, as we saw then, you had uh, Lawson going off that little straight into that corner now, and Wayne Gardner coming onto the little straight part of the circuit there, so the gap is much the same. Perhaps he, he might have picked up a fraction of uh, a second there. We'll get another good shot of them when they come into that corner where Lawson had the, the wobble and the hiccup. That's been our best gaze to time so far. This is lap 13 now at the 13th Grand Prix. <laughs> if superstitious like I used to be, then... You know, Alan Jones, when he raced Formula One cars, used to wear only red underwear. I mean, what was your little trait? I used to avoid wearing red and wear blue. <laughs> <laughs> Lawson out in control, out in front on the Yamaha. Now, there's the corner we talked about. So there's Lawson using a bit more of the road this time. Waiting for, uh, for Gardner. Yeah, it looks like the gap's the same between Gardner and Lawson now. Yeah, it's pretty well been the same right throughout the race there. 
Oh, Saron's got his work cut out with McKenzie and uh, Rainey. Kevin McGee, the other Australian rider, has had a great season. His first time into the big time. He certainly hasn't let his sponsor down. No, he certainly hasn't. I mean, he's done a marvellous job. I spoke to him last weekend at Donington, and he had a, a really big ice pack on his elbow from uh, his crash in, or his couple of crashes in France. He's done a really good job. Barry, what were, what were uh, McGee's thoughts? I mean, is he enjoying his first year in uh, 500 CC racing? Oh, yeah, he's enjoying it. You know, the poor bloke has been thrown in. You couldn't get thrown in much more at a deeper end than uh, than Kevin has, and he's made a good job of it. He's doing exceptionally well. Um, everybody thought that uh, Kevin was going to be the hot shot out of the two between him and Rainey, and it's taken people by surprise that Wayne Rainey has been as exceptional as he has, you know, because he, he really deserved to win uh, the Portuguese Grand Prix at Jerez. And then that, that win last weekend at Donington Park was very well deserved and uh, not before time. So uh, Ke Kevin's in a good team and uh, unfortunately for him, he's got one of the best riders in his team with him. Well, it doesn't surprise me, though. When I saw them in Modesto at Kenny Roberts' farm and they were training, Rainey was always the fast of the two in the three days that I was there. Yeah, the thing is with Rainey that uh, what you've got to bear in mind is in America, they race probably 16 or 17 superbike races, whereas in Australia, uh, Kevin McGee races probably six or seven times a year. So um, for Kevin to race every virtually every weekend or every other weekend, it's been a real old schlack for him driving from one side of Europe to the other. And... Um, it's something that takes a bit of getting used to, but I, he's done a very good job of it. Do you think he's done enough to hold his position with oh, his strike team? No doubt whatsoever. You know, who are they going to take? There's nobody they can get um, that's going to be any better than uh, Kevin McGee. And you couldn't ask for two blokes, two nicer blokes than McGee and Rainey. I mean, they get, they like one another, they talk to one another. Um, you know, they get on very well with one another and the press like them. So you've got everything you want as far as a team manager is concerned. You've got two blokes that can win Grand Prix, two blokes the press like, um, and put their heart and soul into it. So I think they're uh, they're well set. Lap 15, but half distance now. This is Eddie Lawson. You're looking at the American leading the race here in Sweden tonight, and also leading the championship. A win here tonight will wrap it up for him. The World Championship for 1988. Impossible task for Wayne Gardner to make it back. He was hoping for some mechanical problem. The whole Lawson back for a couple of races while he made his charge. Donington was the important race for Gardner, but that uh, practice spill, second place, just not good enough. No, it's, you know, the, the, whole, the whole thing about it is Gardner's show that he's, he's put everything into it. He's given more than his all. And um, the, the, the onus lies with Honda, really. They just made a complete muck up of it they made the bike wrong they did last year Gardner was complaining about brakes at virtually every circuit so what does he do at Donington Park runs out of brakes again and he's got a thing that steers like an airport trolley so um, the onus is on Honda it's nothing to do with Gardner the McKenzie has fought his way through Saron and that good duel will take a break be back shortly have really got an uphill struggle to uh, to get up with their capabilities. OK, Eddie's had a lot of experience, Wayne's had a lot of experience. Um, but as it stands, they're head and shoulders above the rest, really. Barry, now that you've had a chance to have a look at the bikes, first hand at Donington, and have a ride on the Suzuki, what has Honda got to do now to be competitive again with Yamaha, or vice versa, what's Yamaha got to do to, to stay ahead now? Well, Yamaha, uh, I think you'll find that they'll, they'll know what's... Uh, what's wrong with the bikes this year you know the little idiosyncrasies maybe not fast enough here or too too much power there what honda's got to do is start listening to the bloody blokes that ride the things you know last year gardner was saying oh the thing's got no brakes you know and this is okay that's okay so what do they do they don't take a blind bit of notice of the bloke and they give him some thing that is just totally wrong you know it's going to teach him a good lesson i've been in the same situation with suzuki's and uh, every Japanese manufacturer seems to do the same thing. Well, this goes back as far as the Australian Grand Prix in Adelaide last year when we were talking to Wayne Gardner there at the track, and he said then that he knew he was going to have big problems with the bike. 
but he'd given them a list, a detailed list of things to do to correct those problems after testing. The next time we spoke to him was something like four or five months later, and he said, quite frankly, the list hasn't been looked at. Well, that's it. I mean, you, what happens, you see, you get some new designer that comes into the team who's a legend in his own lunchtime, and uh, the bloke just says, oh, no, you know, I think I'm going to do this, I think I'm going to do that. Well, my answer to the designers that used to say that, well, if you think it's that good, you go out and ride it then. You know, that's, that's, that's um, maybe Wayne's a little bit more diplomatic than I used to be, but, you know, it just annoys you. I can feel sympathy for him because I've been through it. I know exactly what it's like. Saron then having a big look over his shoulder where McKenzie was. They've never been uh, more than a bike length apart for this entire race. It's been a great battle between them. There's a tear-off coming off from uh, Eddie Lawson as he just flicks it away and gets a bit of vision again. And here's Wayne Gardner making the charge. He's carving his way through the back markers. He just really can't get a clear shot and make up the distance on Lawson. We'd love to see him come together. Oh, Christian's having too many looks behind. He should look where he's going instead of where he's been. You know, it's, uh, in a situation like that, what he wants to do is really press on and try and get away from McKenzie and leave McKenzie to play with Rainey instead of keep looking behind. Uh, it's uh, not the best thing in the world to do. Speed difference there illustrated as Lawson carves his way through a back marker. I mean, the other fellow looks like he's going backwards. Well, that's the thing, you know, now by comparison to the things I used to race only four years ago, these bikes now are producing another 40 horsepower more than uh, uh, the Suzuki I used to race. Uh, the only thing you can say from a little bit of a wobble from Lawson there. Uh, the only thing you can say is that they're a little bit easier to ride in that the power comes in earlier and goes on longer. Um, that's with a Yamaha, but the Honda, the power comes in like an on-off switch, and that's why it tears the tyres to pieces. And you see Gardner and uh, Mackenzie and Killy's bike uh, wriggling the whole time because the power comes in with a bang, and it just upsets the whole handling of the bike. I know you're a pretty modest fellow, but the time that you put down at Donington on the Suzuki in your jeans and civvy gear would have qualified you 16th on the grid in this day and age. It's not a bad ride. Nah, it's, it, the whole point about it is, you see, I can, I can do that because I haven't got... Uh, I'm just doing it for fun, you know, it's a different kettle of fish when, uh, when you're um, doing it every weekend. You have to... Uh, it's work then, you know, it's 9.48 seconds now, so what I would imagine Wayne will do now is just uh, stroke it and um, keep the same distance in front of Christian. Um, and just hope that something goes wrong with Eddie's bike, because he's going to realise that he can't catch Eddie, so just um, just won't worry about it, and just try and stay in front of um, the pack of Saron uh, Mackenzie Rainey. Not taking anything away from Eddie Lawson, because he has had a magnificent season, but it's all ifs and buts, I guess, but there's a couple of ifs with uh, the Honda. If it hadn't have blown up and if he hadn't have crashed so often, if they had have got it right earlier, it would have been a magnificent duel between these two. Well, it would, you know, but I can fully sympathise with Gardner because uh, everybody, you know, raves on about the Japanese factories and they do some things sometimes and you think, well, there must be some special reason that they've done this, you know, some reason that is far beyond my intelligence. And it boils down to the simple fact is that uh, half the time they don't even listen. You know, so the Hondas now will go back and they'll listen and they'll come out with something sensible. They'll listen to what Gardner says. But they get, um, they suffer from terminal complacency half the time. Eddie Lawson, the American on the Yamaha, out in front doing it pretty well. Hasn't made too many mistakes tonight. He had a little wobble there that we saw coming about halfway through the race, but he settled the bike down there. He knows that all he's got to do is keep it going. And I can remember we said this about three weeks ago about Wayne Gardner. And we're in the lap 20, so there's, uh, what, 10 to go. Wayne Gardner now coming up. Still fighting in for a second. That's the pit signals you can see being held up in front of the, uh, the camera shot there. There's another one for you. Yeah, the ludicrous thing about the circuit in Sweden is that uh, none of the mechanics can get out to the start line. So if you do your warming up lap, um, and you come around to the start lane, you've got a problem. All the mechanics are back at the pits, which are after this long right-hander here. You come up to the left-hander where Lawson had a slide, and then you'll see all the mechanics. You know, you come in back in second, first, round this little bit here. You accelerate out here, and all the pit signals now are over on the right-hand side of the screen. You'll probably see some boards hanging out. 
and uh, it's a sad shame because um, it's such a lovely circuit all they need to do is uh, bring it up to world championship specification when you think that uh, the people from Phillip Island have spent an arm and a leg on sorting their circuit out and uh, bring it out to world championships uh, standards with runoffs and garages and everything and uh, you get the FIM homologate a Mickey Mouse place like this it's um, double standards really come back and talk to you about Phillip Island in a second but we'll take a break Appear from a glass of Bell's scotch. He can't resist Bell's. It's been blended with their finest single malt whiskies for 150 years. Come to think of it, he's not got a head for drink. Welcome back. Eddie Lawson, still in front of the Yamaha. Australia's wine garden on the Honda is second. Christian Saron and McKenzie, the two riders you see there in the blue and the yellow. Third and fourth, Wayne Rainey is in fifth. Kevin McGee from Australia in sixth place. Let's go back to Phillip Island because uh, over at Donington, we had our senior director, Brian Morelli, and uh, other important staff here from Channel 9 taking uh, through a little video eight camera some angles that we could get the, the Phillip Island race right. So the preparation already has started here at nine for Phillip Island. And from what we've seen already from the Donington lesson, we're going to have some exciting angles, Barry. Well, the nice thing is going to be at uh, Phillip Phillip Island that uh, uh, when you're doing the commentary you can you can push the key and say to the director oh give us a shot of this give us a shot of that and uh, so many times I think the telecast we had from Donington was one of the best we've had all season um, some of the races uh, that we've had you can accuse the guy of virtually anything apart from knowing anything about motorbike racing you know that, that's a sad thing but uh, I'm sure that uh, Nine's going to do a good job with it well, the same people will be uh, looking after the Motorcycle Grand Prix. They'll look after the Formula One Grand Prix, of course, and the International Award for Coverage has come to nine two years out of uh, the last... Uh, no, three years out of the last three. What am I saying? I'll get well, sacked. Well, all the accolades that, uh, that nine got after the, uh, after the first uh, Australian Grand Prix, and I've, I've watched um, back the videotapes of, the, of uh, 85, 86 and 87. The National Battle was there two of the years, and uh, I don't think anybody could complain about it. You're always going to get somebody saying something, aren't you? But uh, that's life. Lap 22, so there's nine to go. Uh, now, this is a situation that you love. 
you come up against somebody that you're lapping and the guy wants to race with you and push you out on the grass, it's uh, wonderful. Eddie Lawson out in front. And we wanted to reassure everybody that's uh, watching this race tonight that's stuck with us uh, right throughout the year, watching the series, that uh, we'll tell you that Phillip Island will be a very, very special event on the Australian sporting calendar. The, uh, the camera coverage, uh, I believe, will have something like 22 cameras around the circuit, which is far more than anybody in Europe's ever thought about doing. And already the angles are being worked out. So we're going to see a very, very special Australian sporting event out of Phillip Island when that all happens next year. But right now we're in Sweden. This is Eddie Lost on the Yamaha. He's out in front. And this will wrap up the championship for the American. And uh, it's been a great year for him. He's battled against some odds too. He's battled from injury. He's ridden with a lot of pain, a lot of courage. And tonight getting the rewards. Gardner will come into sight as Lawson goes off around this bend now. That's the way it's been, but oh, <laughs> a little bit of shake up there, and there he is. So that gap's about the same and hasn't really changed. As one's come on, the other one's been going off. Yeah, what happens, you get your get your pit board, say it, he's getting the pit board saying plus, plus eight or plus nine, and then he takes a little bit easy for a couple of laps, gets a plus seven, turns up the wick a bit, and uh, it's a nice situation to be in because that way at least you can rest a little you give your tyres a bit of a rest, give your body a bit of a rest, give your brain a bit of a rest. So it's 9.73, you'll just be content to keep it anywhere over sort of six or seven seconds. Barry, it looks like a tough circuit. It looks like physically uh, you'd be very tired after riding here. Yeah, the nice thing about it is it's all go. You know, it's, it's not something where you get a whole bunch of corners, then a long straight where you think, oh, God, I'm tired. Uh, it's, uh, there's not very many long straights, so therefore you're on the ball the whole time, and uh, you can ride a 60-lap race round here, and it seems like a 10-lap heat, which is good. We've been getting a lot of inquiries from people who have only just tuned into the sport in the last couple of months or so, asking why the riders monowheel so much. Well, it's, a, it's not a case that you want to. At one stage of the game, sort of six or seven years ago, you just used to stuff it on the back wheel to give yourself a bit of fun and give some people something to look at. But now the bike's got so much horsepower, 160 horsepower, and the things weigh about 120 kilos. So it's a case of you just put the power on as gently as you can and try and keep the front wheel down. If you gave that thing a big handful, you could stand it uh, going out this corner that Lawson's going around now. That's a third gear corner. You could just pull on the handlebars and st stick it on its back wheel and sit it on its back wheel for two or three kilometres if you wanted to. When you say that, it sounds so easy. Lap 24, seven to go. Eddie Lawson, complete control tonight, the American. Last couple of races been a little disappointing through uh, Really no fault of his own. He, uh, he had a, an ill-handling bike. He crashed. He was hurting. He was bruised. But he's obviously made up for all of that tonight. He started from the pole position, as you can see now, swinging out very, very wide, tucks himself around, and he's just doing it so easy. He's got all the rhythm and flow now of a winner. He's just lapped um, Fujiwara, who's uh, riding a factory Yamaha. I mean, it's such a tragedy when you think uh, that guy's getting lapped. You know, I... It, just, it's an irony. There's so many young guys over here that uh, would go like a rocket given a chance on a factory bike. It's just a shame that uh, they can't get them. Is that situation much the same as Formula One where a lot of riders that have got uh, the right financial backing can actually buy the ride? Well, no, not really, because with the Formula One thing, it, it's all numbers. I mean, if you know somebody's auntie that happens to be the president of some big company and you get a... A million quid together in sponsorship you can get your backside sat in almost anything but with motorcycle racing it's a lot fairer in that uh, you have to be a really good rider and uh, you just have to know the right people Wayne Gardner getting very ragged there as he went right up onto the rough coming onto that little straight section as we uh, led up to the pits he's done that a couple of times tonight Saron's done the same thing and Mackenzie's done the same thing well the thing is that if you um, once you get uh, all your confidence with the way the tyres are working, with the way the grip is on the circuit, you can let it run out a little bit wider. It's more of an effort to keep the thing in than it is to let it run loose and have its own head, if you like.
Makes me feel like quite an old man watching this race. I won my first Grand Prix here 18 years ago. <laughs> Here he comes now, Eddie Lawson, look at the line. Now you see Lawson there, all he's doing, he could have gone, had a go around the outside of that bloke, but it's not worth it, he'll just wait until he gets on the straight and he's got a nice easy run. And when he's got so much of a cushion as he has, it's just not, uh, it's not worth pushing your luck. Let's keep our, our eye on the Rainey McGee tussle too, because I'm sure Kevin McGee would like to get past Rainey if he can. They're running fifth and sixth at the moment. Yeah, poor old Kevin's had a bit of rough luck. He's fallen down a few times, and uh, his confidence was um, getting better and better. He had a good ride at Donington, and he needs a good ride here. Um, and then I think we'll find he'll really start to uh, charge on again with the last three races. It's so, psycho it's so psychological, any kind of sport, but uh, motorcycle racing, you only need a couple of sort of slide-offs, and uh, it knocks your confidence, and it takes a bit of a while to get it back again. We're just looking at Wayne Gardner going through that particular corner then. I mean, his line is not as hard as it was. He's content now to sort of float in the, the centre of the corner rather than pick the apex. Well, that's the thing, Daryl. I mean, he realises he's on a hiding to nothing. nothing. You see, it's 13.7 seconds. He's sensible enough to know that he can go as hard as he likes, and he can probably cut that down to nine seconds, but it's still nine seconds. So all he's going to do is just uh, watch his pit bull, see how much distance he's got on uh, Christian Saron, and he's doing the right thing. There's nothing else you can do. You know, you can go like a lunatic and uh, finish five seconds behind and have the chance of throwing a thing up the road, or you can ride sensibly and say, OK, right, well, I'll settle for second. Whilst you were in England at Donington, uh, was there much talk about rider movement for next season? Yeah, there always is, but people talk a lot of rubbish, you know, they're saying that Kevin Schwantz is going to go and ride for Honda and this one's going to go and ride for that one. Um, the only sure thing I would say is that uh, you're going to see somebody new in the, uh, in the uh, position alongside Kevin Schwantz and the Suzuki team next year. Um, and that's about the only thing you can guarantee. You see there, 21 is uh, Raymond Roche and the Kajiva. Almost certainly uh, Roche will be replaced with somebody. Um, but I'd like to see uh, one of the young Aussie guys uh, get the Suzuki ride. That'd really uh, maybe a happy chappy. What about Philip Arlen? Have they uh, have been asking you about? Do they know anything about the track? Yeah, the, all the Spanish guys. I speak Spanish and Italian, and all the all the uh, Spaniards were asking, uh, "What's it like? Where is it?" Etc. Etc. And I was totally embarrassed to say, "Well, I, I know where it is, but I haven't been there." So uh, I'll go down there in the next couple of months and have a look and I've spoken to Suzuki and when they go testing they're going to lend me a bike and we're going to stick a camera on it as far as I know so we'll get a sort of a um, couple of months beforehand we'll get a bird's eye view of the circuit and what I think of it for what it's worth not a lot probably <laughs> but um, we, uh, we should get a good idea of what it's like anyway this time we might put you in a set of leathers well it would be nice I mean a pair of Levi's not the ideal thing to ride around a motorbike track and <laughs> and he lost it now, the American. Race down the, the wind down lap 27, four laps to go. Now, you see, it's not too late, as we know, after watching the French Grand Prix. We start the last lap, say, well, you know, Wayne's got to do now. You know, he'll be thinking, oh, yeah, maybe this is rattling, maybe that's rattling. And the blooming thing blew up. So we never know until, until he comes around this corner on the last lap and gets there. He can coast to the line from there. So, um... I suppose it's unfair to say, but all we can do is hope. <laughs> I don't think we should say that. No, it's a sport's a sport, and that you know, Lawson has ridden exceptionally well. Gardner and um, four or five of the other guys have ridden well. That's the luck of the draw. You know, that's all there is to it. Christian Saron uh, looks like he's pulling a nice uh, bit of a gap on Neil McKenzie. So I think um, if somebody should get points this year, it should be. Uh, good old Christian. He used to be a bit of a scatterbrain, but he's sorted himself out so well now, and he's been very consistent, far and away the best European guy. He's going to have a sore neck after this race. He's been looking over his shoulder for all night. Actually, Philip Island, we must get uh, some... have a chat with Christian, because he's, uh, he's a very likeable character, and he says the most funniest things. 
Kevin McGee now winding it up. He's built the, well, that, that lead's come down a little. 12 4 1 now. It was 13 just a couple of laps ago. So he's just easing off now. He's only got a few laps to go. The nice thing is, with a couple of laps to go, he could have, if he wanted to, he could go three seconds a lap slower. And if you slow down three seconds a lap, I mean, it's just like you're going on a Sunday afternoon drive. Sitting up under brakes like that, how much uh, velocity does that put on your body? Do you feel that once you sit up into the airstream? Well, it's quite handy, really, because when you put the brakes on, uh, the inertia throws your body forward. And if you're going quick, when you sit up, the wind pushes your body back, so it takes some of the weight off your arms. It's, um, you notice it at a very, very fast place, like, uh, say, Daytona, where you're doing 190, 200 mile an hour. Uh, it's just, it's just an extra thing to slow you down, really. And you put your left leg out, going into a left-hand corner, the wind hits your left leg and pulls the bike into the corner, stops it drifting out so far. We're on lap 29. There's two laps to go. He's looking at Eddie Lawson from the USA on the Yamaha. He's virtually led from the start. He uh, was on pole, grabbed the lead at the end of the second lap, and midway through the second lap, and he's just hung onto that and built a lead. Wayne Gardner starting from grid spot number 13 tonight has uh, made a brilliant start. Got himself up into second, then he was bumped back to fourth. He's fought his way back to second, but can't possibly win this now. He's going to come in behind his arch-rival this season, Eddie Lawson. Yeah, Gardner's got a nice, safe second place now. It's, he's just riding around thinking, well, what more can I do? There's nothing he can do. He's doing the best job he can. And uh, all he's got to hope is that... Um, the thing stays together for once in a way. I get the feeling now that Wayne Gardner will still pull out all stops till the end of this season. By no means is the racing ended, even though the championship might be decided. Well, yeah, for sure, because by going really quick in the next three races, Lawson on his last lap now, uh, going really quick in the last three races, then all the problems with the bike, you know, whether it's brakes, uh, power characteristics or whatever, then what he's got to do at the end of the year is say, right, listen, you lot, sit down and have a good listen to this. Write down all the problems on a bit of paper. What I used to do after one year when they didn't listen to me, I wrote down all the problems and got some guy to sign it so that I took a copy of it so they couldn't say, oh, very sorry, not understand. You know, it's, it's a, I know it sounds dark, but it's very true. Eddie Lawson now as he wraps up the Yamaha and brings it round on the final lap to take the chequered flag. Heels the bike over now, and the right-hander as it tucks in. And this is where we saw a, uh, a pretty dramatic change of pace early in the race, when it was a real dogfight between four or five riders. But right now, the Yamaha clear air. Eddie Lawson just heading out for the chequered flag, swings it around again. Heels the bike right over, and he's, he knows he's got plenty up his sleeve. Wayne Garden away back there. 10, 11, 12 seconds behind. And watch for the big mono as he comes down because he'll throw it up on the back wheel. The American be absolutely delighted with his performance tonight, starting from pole position. He's dominated this race after an early scrap. Video de is making a great start. And we finally sorted out how you do pronounce his name, thanks to Barry Sheen. <laughs> so no more letters on that, please. And here we go. Coming up to the uh, the finish line now, takes the chequered flag. Eddie Lawson from the USA has won the Swedish Grand Prix on the Yamaha. And that'll wrap up the championship down. He is delighted, waving to the crowd. Great race from Lawson. Here's the Australian, Wayne Gardner, coming across the line in second place. Another gutsy ride from Gardner when he considered that he dropped the bike in practice. Rode tonight with a, an injured wrist. Came from 13th spot on the grid. Christian Saron over in third. McKenzie with another good ride too tonight. Yeah, it's Rainey and then McGee. Okay, so Rainey getting the better of McGee, and that was a good duel in the, uh, the last third of that race between those two as the flag goes out for the rest of the field. We'll run through the top six for you shortly. Recap on those places, but definitely Eddie Lawson was in first place. In second place was Wayne Gardner from Australia. Third place, Christian Saron from France. Fourth place was Neil McKenzie in the yellow leathers. 
In fifth place was Wayne Rainey, and in sixth place was Kevin McGee. We'll take a break and be back for the presentation shortly.